All right, welcome to the August 28th Aries Working Group call. We're going to continue our Future of Aries discussion part three. Um, this will likely, well, should have covered most of the details and wrap things up. We'll see how that goes. Um, and then open discussion, any other topics people want to raise. Um, this is a Linux Foundation, Hyperledger Foundation meeting. So um, the antitrust policy is in effect as uh, of the Linux Foundation, as is the Hyperledger Foundation Code of Conduct. Please be good to one another. Um, reminder, we are recording, as you heard from the Zoom voice, so others can catch up on, on this as we go. Um, for announcements, I'll start with one. Um, open the floor. Anyone who wants to make an announcement, prepare to step up if you would like to or raise a hand and I'll give you uh, give you the floor. But um, I did want to mention that um, IBM Zurich, I believe it's IBM Zurich, certainly the people that I, I are connected with it that I knew um, have known, have started up an Aries um, BBS Go project uh, or sub project. So they extracted from the Aries framework Go um, project that was um, archived the Aries BBS or the BBS code from that and, and created a standalone Aries Go project. And then they've also um, just recently, um, last week, started a Hyperledger Lab that is an implementation of VC, um, the Verifiable Credential Data Integrity BBS um, um, specification. So they've got an implementation of that in Go. I guess I should underline that, that it's Go. So this is all sort of combined together. Um, so um, quite interesting for those that might be interested in that. Um, that is one of the possibilities um, for uh, the, the VCDI BBS is one of the possibilities for um, next generation um, ZKP based verifiable credentials. Um, and so an interesting project. Any other announcements or, or comments to raise at this time? I'll mention, I, I put a, a note underneath the race status and work updates, but it might not be the right spot. Um, Aries VCX uh, created an official uh, GitHub discussion outlining our proposal to move Aries VCX to the Open Wallet Foundation. Um, yeah. to give a forum for any objections or commentary. Um, we'll be discussing uh, that topic uh, in the next Aries VCX uh, uh, community call on Tuesday, September 3rd. Um, so happy to have participation there, but uh, <laughs> this isn't necessarily news, but I uh, figured we wanted to make it a little bit more official, our uh, proposal to do so, and get any community feedback from the Aries VCX consumers. Okay. I had also put that down here. So, um, as you notice me updating as you talk, so um, I put that in. Um, nice to have the link to the um, call if you can add that in, if it's handy. Yeah. Um, that'd be good. All right. Any other announcements? Okay. Um, release status um, with Akapai 1.0 out. That's all we've had, but we've continued to have a stream of updates in. And so Akapai continues to move forward in that way. Uh, lots of things happening. Anything else to announce on, on products? Oh, you know what I mentioned? This has been revamped. Um, the we we started to have trouble with the um, publishing of the um, test results from Aries Asian Test Harness, so I went in and just converted this over to a make doc site and generated. In the course of that, discovered that the Aries VCX um, jobs had not been working as thought, even though we were getting results continuously. The actual um, up-to-date results were not being published properly. So I fixed the um, um, GitHub Actions for Aries VCX. So now these results are up-to-date with right now. Um, and um, be great if we could um, get 
a, a little bit of focus on these to try to clean out the results and, and bump up these numbers, these percentages. Interestingly, the percentages stayed the same when I fixed that, but the number of tests we executed went way up. So a lot's passing, a lot more passing um, to show for us, but we still have ones not there. And I also um, flagged in a comment, um, James, that you might want to bring up that the Aries VCX, um, there's a number of PRs for Aries VCX on just GitHub or Dependabot. Um, I tried to go through, but didn't feel comfortable putting them in. Um, often when we get this many, we just sort of go through and add them into a single one, um, put in the pull request, and then these will all get closed. Um, so James, if if someone on the Aries VCX community could, um, could do that so we could get rid of a lot of these pull requests, that would be wonderful. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it. I would not expect at this point, given how we have adjusted things in the back channel, for there to be any new dependent pod, uh, PRs, because at this point, the entire back channel is in the VCX repo, and then we just move the yeah. publish the image. So okay. I think probably most of these can just be closed. Excellent. But I'll take a look. That's great. Um, I love that idea. I was thinking about that yesterday and, and some of the conversations on AATH um, that I hadn't realized that's exactly what you had done, but removing the um, back channel out of Aries Agent Test Harness and putting it in the repo is way better way to do this. It's something we should have done long ago. Um, so um, I, I'll, I'll bring that up with Sheldon. He's on vacation this week, but I'm going to bring it up with him to try to get that um, to happen across the board and especially, uh, well, I'll certainly do it with, um, see if we can get somebody to do that with Aquapi. Good idea. All right. Um, next, uh, any other comments before we jump into the primary topic of the, of the meeting? Okay. Um, so future of Aries discussion, um, Many of you, um, the people that are here at least, um, were probably here for the um, uh, initial conversations we've had over the last two weeks. I did a, a presentation last week to facilitate the discussion and I've extended it to essentially summarize um, what, what we talked about in the final. So all of the upfront slides here are the same, but where we got to the decision slides, um, um, I added these sort of summary documents. I bounced these off um, a few people, Sam and James included, um, representing different projects, and got a bit of feedback. But the idea here is to summarize, here's what we're, we're going to do, and, and we think we've, we've agreed to it. Um, the um, first thing was... Um, Akapai is going to apply to move to OWF. Um, we agreed that, as I mentioned last last week at the at the last Akapug caveat to, to consider what came out of the Aries Group meeting, but I don't think anything came out at last week's meeting to change that. Um, I'll take this out because I have a proposal already done. Um, so in here, I've got a draft of what we've put together. I'll share this more broadly today, um, but this basically has the proposals that will be converted. Once we get some feedback on this, um, these proposals will be converted into um, GitHub uh, PRs as per um, OWF process. So there's one for Ak Akapai, one for ASTAR, one for Aries Agent Test Harness, and then I'm just finishing off about right after this meeting, I'll um, populate this, um, the last one for the Wallet Interoperability Special Interest Group. Um, so that's the plan for um, Akapai and related projects. In here, um, I do talk about which other repositories would go along with it. Um, in here, 
Um, I'll mention this, I've got it in the presentation, but I'm adding this in talking about it within BC Gov. BC Gov has had a, a repository called BC OpenID OIDC, Open ID Connect. Um, so it's a, a multi-tenant Open ID Connect identity provider um, that you can run locally and your local um, OIDC relying parties can use it to um, get authentication jots uh, based on verifiable credentials. So um, we're planning on including that. We do a lot of work with that. Um, I, people have discovered it. I don't quite know why we never actually moved it into um, uh, Hyperledger, but the plan is now to move BC Auth N in as part of ACAPI into OIDC. And of course, this is entirely er, into OWF. And this, this component is entirely based on ACAPI. Um, so that covers these. I didn't include there. So all of the Aries Akapai star repositories plus Accreta. So that was in that what I just showed. Um, Aries endorser service will go with Akapai. Um, and and this is indie specific. Um, it we suspect that it's going to evolve over time to become um, more generalized. We think it's very useful as part of the um, did TDW, did web um, publisher service. So this one may evolve uh, over time. Aries mediator service, I think would be best moved to diff as part of a diff com, uh, didcom project um, and ideally expanded to include Aries socket doc, which shouldn't be capitalized here, but there you go. Um, Feel free to one, jump in anytime with comments. One question I, I thought of just now was you had previously mentioned uh, Aries Socket Doc moving over to the diff, if I recall yes. correctly. Yes. Does that make sense to have that go to the... Uh... Oh, this is different than I thought it was previously. So you're yeah, thinking of moving the Aries Meteor service to the diff Yes. Okay, that would. <laughs> I was gonna ask about. It's, so, uh, it's more did come or did Yeah. Oh yep, right. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 I, Stephen, my comment on it is, is I think that uh, that because they're did come related, I think that's uh, appropriate. I think it could be useful uh, to have those inside of uh, Open Wallet as well. Um, yeah. The, the 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 diff stuff now doesn't have really very many code bases at all <clears throat> and uh and so it's it, you know we, we talk about like protocols and stuff but there's not really like the only code base that really uh, exists for that is um oh, why should we blank on the name um but there there is a code base that's not really part of the diff effort or the didcom effort there at the diff and so one of the options is just to move the code to OWF simply because OWF is a code container, not a spec container, um, mm -hmm. and then and then and then leave the but 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 have all of sort of the design and protocol design discussions then happen in, in the diffs. So I think it could go either way. It's, yeah. it's a little different. Um, if if the OWF did not want the DINCOM related stuff, that's one issue, um, and I think that the diff would would find a home for it. Um, but uh, but but anyway, that's. A little rambly, but I, I so I started out saying I think it could I think it should go to the diff. And now that I'm talking, I'm thinking maybe it would be better honed at the OWF just because it's the libraries to enable stuff the same way that a whole lot of other OWF stuff is. Yeah. My thought was to keep did calm together. Um and 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 diff as the go-to place for did calm related things. Um let me, oh, let, me do, let me do some asking about that. Yeah, let me do some asking about that point okay. because I I'm not super passionate either way, but uh, but I will I will reach out and talk to Kim. Uh, yeah, Duffy. Yeah. Um, about about that topic specifically. Um, you you mentioned uh, would o OWF not care? I'm sure this is so far in the weeds. Once we get into the into the application, that this won't even come up. 
Um, so it's really up to us if we include it or don't. It would be part of ACAPI. We wouldn't send it as an independent, I don't think, would we? Or are you, you thinking though, sending it as an independent project? You could send both of them as independent, well, as one independent pro uh, project. Could could be done. Okay. Because that way it's not, it's of course useful for ACAPI, but it isn't necessarily not useful outside of okay. ACAPI. I'm, I'm thinking, for example, of um, of uh, Credo, and Credo yeah. has DidComp support, and having uh, you know yep. mediation yeah. code, et cetera, is is a is a, is a benefit to Credo as as part of that effort. Yeah. Right. I also think that since uh, you can do either Acapi or Credo in the Aries Mediator service, yeah, exactly. That, it, yeah, it, it makes sense to have it be independent if it's an OWF. Yeah. I mean, what we really need is to get Aries Socket Doc in there and then, you know, make Aries Mediator Service just the parts that are needed. It's, you know, both Credo and Aquapi are way overkill for, for Aries Mediator Service. It, it needs yep. so little. Um, it'd be nice to get something tuned as, as a, a DITCOM mediator, a scalable DITCOM mediator. Yeah, okay. And then here's that mention of VC auth n um, Aries Ascar. I've got that um, applied to move to OWF, and I think that totally makes sense. Um, don't think there's any controversy there, right? Independent project and in OWF. No contest at all. I think that's a great idea. I think it'll make yeah. it more universally applicable for other folks in the wallet. Yeah. So Aries VCX um, are discussing, we can change now, uh, uh, discussing applying to move to OWF independently of Akapai to be determined. Um, I did get a feedback from um, the maintainers of Swift and Kotlin, and they are following the conversation and are likely to apply to move them to OWF as well. Um, will apply to create a wallet interoperability special interest group. Um, and as mentioned, I'll have the proposal for that shortly. The plan there is it will be a place to develop interoperable interop profiles with AIP 2.0 as the initial exemplar. Um, so more or less, we will move certainly the the links in and and wording of Aries RFC 302 AIP 2.0 section will be put into um, uh, OWF as as part of the work of this special interest group, and then um, profiles would be versioned, and so an AIP three is possible, but we expect there to be multiple profiles that encompass other technology choices each with their own versioning. So AIP3 will definitely not be the um, cover everything, but rather there will likely be a OIDC for VCs stack um, that covers various things um, and and uh, that encompass other, you know, and 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 that grows from there, has independent conversations and grows from there. Stephen, you may have not talked about this, but this doesn't have to be an AIP if it's not in Aries. Yeah, absolutely. It could be like an OIP, right? Yes. Where it's like an open uh, or OWIP, um, like the open wallet interoperability profile. Um, actually, this AIP, sorry, AIP 2.0 will be AIP because it's based on Aries. So I think this right. would, it, would it, it was AIP. Yeah, right. Yes. But, 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 but new in our profiles don't necessarily need to be needed. That. Absolutely. What I meant here is AIP 3.0 as a, a as a evolution of Ari of AIP 2 is possible. Um, and and maybe we would rename it to to DIP did comma interop profile. I don't know. But one that one continues the, in that vein. One that of the sense. helpful things that we talked about last time, Sam, when you were gone. I, th I think it was last time was the the concept of having multiple uh, interop profiles in 
parallel with each other so not just yeah. one track of profiles where we might have multiple one for that's like for oid for vc for instance uh etc right yeah and that's that totally makes sense Yeah, we were having a uh, discussion the other day in the JITCOM working group about sort of the migration of stuff to JITCOM.org uh, and all the changes that would need to be made there, linkages, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Um, Aries agent test harness. Um, we did talk about a couple of ways it could go. Um, make forking it into both diff and OWF. And in the end, we decided forking it would be a bad idea. Um, we think the best approach from our conversation last week was to push it to OWF with the aim of expanding it to cover other interop profiles as they are developed so that the the model of using a test harness harness would would continue um and and different um subsets of tests would cover different profiles and you could um define to run you know your implementation with other similar implementations easily so that's kind of the plan there a pointer and a subset of the AATH test case relevant to DIDCOM could be put into, um, put under the auspices of the DIF, um, DIDCOM working group to continue to expand um, the DIDCOM related tests um, happening there. I think that captures what we said last week. I think sending that to the OWF is a good idea. And, and yeah. Cool. Um, Aries RFCs, um, as James pointed, uh, so this basically captures what we said last week, move the repo um, and, and freeze the repo in, in diff. So give it a new published name. So right now it is published here. Um, let's uh, publish it at a similar but a different you know obviously a different url but let's let's capture that and and continue it to keep it there and then review the existing rfcs um and move worthwhile relevant and worthwhile rfcs that are vidcom protocols um to be copied into the diff rfcs registry so particularly the ones that are currently just links Let's move them properly into the registry and um, and then, you know, more or less get rid of, you know, ignore all the rest, leave them in their frozen copy, but, but don't worry about the rest. Um, and then there are at least the OCA for Aries that probably needs another home. And I, and I quite frankly, don't know where that is yet. So have to think about that. Um, Colton, does that match what, was discussed is that where you guys ended up in your in the in the call on monday uh the call on monday was just uh, lightly touching on it saying that as we go ahead and move things we'll need to be going through the documents and whatnot and making sure that all of the linkages between rfcs are maintained or pointed to like new locations of documents and such yeah yeah uh, I have a question about the linkages. Do, does it make sense to move the RFCs repo to the diff or just to archive it at, in place? So we freeze the repo. The only thing I'm worried about is I, I'm, the only thing I'm worried about is the hyper if if the hyperledger organization where it goes so that it could disappear entirely. That that was the only th reason of of moving it to at least it would be in a diff didcom place. I mean this URL is not particularly memorable. Um, so I wonder we should we should reach out to Hyperledger about that because my guess is that they would be happy because when you archive a diff when you archive a repo 
like I believe the the the, the rendered GitHub page of stuff still stays there. I have to check on that. Um, but if we but if we froze it and it's still just rendered in place, but then like no changes are really made, then all the yeah. all the links that exist out there in the world would just still work, and that feels like a really nice plan. Um, to not break all the links as part of that. Plan. Okay. Uh, the the typical way that they archive things is they move it to hyperledger dash archives. <laughs> so it, so it would change things. then. Well, <laughs> so if if so if that's the case, let me let me let me talk to them and see what could happen. Yeah, I talk to them. Might be able to work out is is that uh, is that for some period of say two years or something it maintains. I okay. don't know what that looks like with the new org shift, and I think yeah. we would be able to stay in the in the GitHub repository. The GitHub organization of Hyperledger. Even yeah, I don't. I, the new I should. I'll contradict myself to say I don't think the Hyperledger org is going away. I just thought it would at least have a, a working group around it at Diff. That's what I was worried about, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let me talk with them about that because I think that um, if we can, if without too much grief, we can maintain links. Okay. Without having to go find them all and fix them, I think that that's that's worthy of consideration. I, that said, it, you know, rather than having links in those docs, uh, uh, first I would redo the the but but replace where it's got the didcom.org where it's got a link to, with the actual document instead of having. No, no, it no. I'm I'm fully in there. But, okay. But I think to just but but I think to like have. Aries RFCs generally have all of their links change would be to. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not, so I'm not yeah. saying we don't. I don't. I'm not saying we don't like list the protocols properly. I'm just saying that yeah. like for all of the other stuff, uh, maintaining okay. those links I think would be helpful. And so here's something that can also be done if the links have to change. Uh, if possible, you could have a stub repo in place of the current one that renders a 404 page that automatically redirects the user to the correct page that would i would take that as a secondary measure not the primary one Be, because our intent is yeah. to freeze it then i think that that's a that, that that's a good idea and by freeze i don't necessarily mean archive i mean exactly we, yeah you leave a you leave a very small set of maintainers on there that can make changes for utility purposes like injecting a new link at the top or something else but but the the, the goal there would be to never materially change the content of that repository um, and yes. so, and so I think that's, that's sort of plan B is that we do the redirect thing, but yeah. uh, honestly, okay. I, I, like I think this. that a lot of the, I think, I think a lot of the RFCs need to remain and they're very useful to have, but we shouldn't, um, but, but they're, they're good for historical purposes and all new work will happen other places. So how that so freeze the repository and then review and copy for evolution into the diff RFC. So the ones we think are currently active and could be clarified further and could even you know evolve into multi uh, ongoing versions can go into the diff RFCs. Yes. Okay. Quite specifically, that... no new version would be created in the old repo. All new exactly. versions would have to be created somewhere else. Exactly. Yep. With the, for instance, let's say we take uh, the latest data, data exchange version, we move it over into the uh, diff registry. Do we uh, note th that it has moved in the Aries RFC page? Say, <laughs> hey, for the most recent updates, any clarifications and stuff, go here. Uh, yes. Or, yes. Okay. And that's yeah. the difference between freezing and archiving. If we freeze it, then yeah. we can still sort of update a note at the top that says, hey, it's over here now. Yeah. Um, but but no massive material changes will be made. And yeah, that way, to your point, James, like people know where to find the new one from the old one, which I believe is very helpful. Yeah. I, I believe if you migrate the repository to the new location, so if you migrate it to OWF or any other destination inside of GitHub, uh, the previous project URL will properly map to the new one. It does, but not the GitHub rendered pages. And only for a period of time. Oh, is that time limited? 
Uh, well, I don't know if it's time limited. Yeah, now that I say that, I shouldn't. I think it's time limited. That's what I had been led to understand. But, you know, it could be just that um, if anyone else creates a repo, it would disappear automatically. But nobody's likely to create Aries RFCs again, repo. Well, particularly within the hyperledger org, right? Yeah. So, um, it, it, I did the, look it up the other day when you just to confirm it was indefinite unless hyperledger creates another Aries RFC okay. repo breaking that yeah. link. Yeah. So, linking to the repository itself, I think would work really well, Kim. I, what I'm worried about is the is the links to the rendered docs those have been around less long so maybe it's a considering it's a concern i shouldn't really have but that, that, that gives me the pause because then it won't automatically redirect the github rendered pages to the new links okay um Okay. Um, other repositories, Arca, Aries Static Agent, um, we're moving Socket Doc to, uh, let's just remove this one since we've already referenced it. And these ones, I'm not sure. Aries VBS Go is the one that I talked about at the start of this meeting. Um, I'm not sure about, I think Aries Unify Wrappers is used by the Kotlin and Swift. This one, I don't know what it is at all. <laughs> I couldn't tell even from the README though, and I quickly looked at it. I didn't dig in too diff too deeply into it, but there you go. I think that was a really old effort to provide like Docker images for things, but okay. I, think it's been, I think it's been years. I'd have to go check the repo itself. Okay. So that's likely archived. Okay, and that, is the finish of what we've got. So there's two open things then. One is okay. where the, the code around DidCom goes. Uh, we, we talked about this earlier, but just to sort of summarize. And I'm going to talk to Kim Hamilton Duffy Diff about, about that. Um, my okay. inclination is maybe the Open Law Foundation, but we'll see. Um, the second one is make sure we nail down the details about what happens to the Aries RFC repository. Those are the two open things, right? And then everything else seems pretty settled. Um, uh, it was to make sure that everything's nailed around the RFCs. All right. Anything else? So I think we've got it settled. Um, so this is the document. I'll share this around to the community. Um, once I've had a few more eyes, I'll share it. Um, I've already shared it to this group. You guys have a link to it in the, um, in the uh, agenda for this meeting. Um, so comments are absolutely welcome and adjustments. Um, I'll then share it with somebody at OWF. Um, uh, Brian Bellendorf suggested um, that they go through it a bit ahead of time. Then I'll open it um, broadly to the Aries community to talk about these and, um, and then convert them in the next little while over to um, uh, over to GitHub proposals, uh, GitHub documents in the um, format requested by OWF. Um, timeline for sharing that to Brian? Uh, like, like today. With, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that'll be today. I, I endorse that speed. Yeah, I'm we, not. We, we have only only a couple things not totally settled yet, but I think that his overall yeah. You know, that could be yeah, yeah. And these ones are just the ones we've decided are 
these aren't controversial anymore. Uh, the only controversial line, I guess, is is whether I'm including uh, in this list um, Aries Mediator, Aries Mediator Service or not. I think that's the only or, one. Or is a or is a separate new project, right? That's the. Oh right, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, one thing to look at is is the maturity level. So they have three levels: labs, um, growth, and impact. Um, impact being the highest level. Um, so we're proposing Akapai as impact. Um, and then the other two, Askar. Probably growth, but very arguably impact. So this one's kind of in the middle. Um, and then um, Aries test harness would be lab. Um, here we've got it. And so it would start out. I, I, Actually, it didn't say it in here, so I'll be fixing that. <laughs> but anyway, lab. Um, and then people are welcome to go through these, what I've put into the uh, various places. Um, most of it's pretty straightforward. Um, the only ones that are, you know, sort of custom are alignment with the foundation mission and the um, project descriptions. So there you go. All right. Um, it looks any like other your Google Docs need uh, permissions, by the way? Oh Google shoot! Google Sorry. Google. Thank you. Let me yep. do that really quickly. Oops. put commentator in here. I don't normally do that, but I'll do it this time. There you go. Sorry about that. Thanks, James, for catching that. Okay. Yes, I meant to add this one to it. Glad you raised this. So padding, oh my God, padding. James, you got this floor. Yeah, so this came up when uh, I was working on adding some specific uh, encoding logic to Aries VCX code. Um, essentially, it is not fully defined within the RFC around padding. Um, uh, theoretically, we should be having a uh, uh, we should have our base sixty four year old data objects be uh, include padding, and if padding is used, it should be percent encoded uh, to one put into a URL um, for happy URL processing. Um, that's not necessarily what we have. Uh, as a community, uh, Akapai uh, does use a does do padding um, by the default uh, out of band invitation creation, um, but does not percent encode it. Credo does not uh, have uh, does not do padding uh, and does not percent encode it. Obviously, um, yeah. So uh, I think there's a question of one: what should we be doing, and then two uh what are we doing and what should be included as the recommendation uh within the rfc uh, as a clarification and the proper answer is i think remove sender should never send a padding character they should be removing them before i think we've discussed this a few times so i think that rings true to my memory but i'm not looking at the rfc says so written yeah, this one doesn't have that. 
um, which I was kind of disappointed in. It does say that any recipient of a uh, of a of a base sixty four encoded should handle it, whether it's padded or not. But it doesn't have the line. Don't do it. Don't do it. As a sender and and this yeah. whole um, I I didn't realize the percent three D comes into play. What's the whole point of base 64 URL encoding if it leaves a invalid character in it? <laughs> it's like, oh man. Um, so I think uh, Akapai should definitely be fixed to strip it. And I don't think that'll break anything. And especially because the, um, the, the RFC does say at least, well, it doesn't say what the sender should do. It it does say don't. Uh, it should expect either one and handle it. So yeah, I don't so think, changing what Akapai does shouldn't yeah, break people's exactly. handling of the invitations. Exactly. We can also I, add a recommend to not send it, and we a should instead of a must without actually like turning that into a breaking change. So I'm okay if we add a should um to to the to the to the uh, yeah out of end RFC. Yeah and that's what's here. That's so part the, of my PR yeah. proposed proposed here. Yeah. Oh right. Perfect. Yes I I I endorse this change. Yeah. And then we have to get a fix in Akapai as soon as possible. Then James. It's not 2028, is it? <laughs> How long was I on that hiking trip? <laughs> it could be if you really want it to be. <laughs> um, are we merging this now? Do we have enough consensus? I think we do. I vote yes. Yes. The, the finger is oh, coming yes. down on the button. Go, hit it, merge. Of course, you have to do it twice, so what the heck. Okay, good. Thanks, James. All right. I think that's it for the, our conversation today, unless anyone has anything else to add. And of course, we will continue this meeting until the um, OWF meeting comes along. And then as well, we have the DIDCOM um meeting as well perhaps we want to merge the two and have it a joint diff owf meeting oh that would be good possibly something um, to consider yes it, it, your point though is that this meeting may be a little bit more focused on getting that over the finish line than, than any exactly. other topics that we could then resume. So I think that should be semi expected, but it's a, it, but it's an important topic to shepherd along. So we should kind of yeah, make that yeah. happen. And and while I've got my mic unmuted, I thanks to Stephen for running things last week and and then also this week to help us process along. It's been very helpful in my my uh, absence. No problem. Drive safe. All right, folks. How did that move? All right. Last comments going once. I'd be down for that joint meeting, at least in the uh, interim as the transition's going on. Yeah. I mean, I think it makes sense. And I, I think, you know, there's enough. We, we can set an agenda such that both groups get um, the airtime they need. 
and and it brings in the relevant people. But we'll see how it evolves. We but certainly do it for for now. Yep. All right. The gavel is back to you next week, Sam. Unless you can't make it. But nope, oh, I'll make it. Excellent. All right. Take care, all. Bye. Thank you.